Speak about the intrinsic evil of America dropping the A bomb. So actually, because she's I, famous I, for that. I she's, find that I yes. find that Americans, we we love our country, yeah. and we sometimes get things mixed up, yeah. and we put our sort would, of patriotism to, yeah. or Americanism before. I would love truth. to talk about that. Yeah, I want to say one thing. She she had a famous little um, saying that she made up about double effect mm. or the principle of side effects. The idea that again, that some side effects, if you would have done them in purpose, they'd be absolutely prohibited, no excuse. But if you don't intend them, maybe you can get an excuse depending on circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, and she said that the, the, corru the corruption of non-Catholic thought is the denial of double effect. So the denial mm. of double effect mm. is, the, is the corruption of, of non-Catholic moral thinking, people that deny double effect, people that um, uh, the abuse of double effect is the corruption of Catholic moral thinking. So on, on this idea of double effect hinges corruption or non-corruption of moral thinking for both Catholics and non-Catholics, according to Anscombe. This is one of the central ideas in her moral philosophy. This principle has to do with intention, right? What Neil's question about intention has to do with means and ends and how we, how we do that, how we understand what that is. That's at the heart of some of the moral problems we're having today, mm -hmm. right? It has to do with how do we describe actions Mm -hmm. The thing that she was doing was trying to say, well, there's certain action descriptions that we use. So which descriptions are true? Say I give you a video and there's a man with a shovel, right? And he's like putting it in dirt, right? And I, I play this game in my class. I say it's an action description game. What's he doing? You give me a description, Jacob. Uh, he's, he's digging a tomb. He's, dig <laughs> he's digging a tomb? <laughs> Grave, yeah. Okay. So now you give me another description, but it has to be consistent with, has to be the same story, but a different description. I'll be honest. I was checking something okay. on YouTube. So you, could say, you, could, you could say he's, he's exercising because his wife told him to exercise. Oh, cool. Okay. Right. So that could be true of the same thing he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, every time saying. we do anything, there's multiple descriptions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the question is which descriptions are the relevant ones. And that's the problem that mm -hmm. JP two was concerned with in one of the greatest encyclicals of the 20th century, which is Veritatis Splendor, yes, mm -hmm. the, the, the identity of the moral object. That's yeah. what he called it. Anscombe just said, it's the description under which you describe the action. Right. And so how we choose that. So when you pick up the bazooka, right. And you fire in that one case, how do we describe that action from when we're trying to morally evaluate mm -hmm. it? Right. Um, so do we describe it in such a way that the death is an accident or incidental? Or do we describe it in such a way that the death is, is, is essential, right? So there's sometimes you can't do that. Say like, well, I assassinated that guy, mm. right? I sniper assassinated him, but I didn't mean to kill him. Right? <laughs> you can't say that because mm. to assassinate involves essentially, right? The killing, the intending to kill, yep. right? But with the firing a gun for lots of reasons, you don't, you don't have to intend, right? The death of somebody when you aim and fire a gun at them. Right. Yep. You may, you may not. And sometimes it's hard to tell in circumstances, but the point is there is a difference. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Anscombe said this idea of intention is all about how do we do, find those descriptions, yeah, I just, the proper descriptions. You know, I was thinking just maybe for a clarification or for people who don't actually believe that that's the case, that if you turn a gun on somebody that you don't really want to kill them, you don't um, have to want, you to don't have them. to want to kill them. Yeah. My, um, really dear friend, my, uh, Blaze's godfather, my son's godfather. He always he always carries. He has a gun. He's you know former law enforcement, mm -hmm. and he also always carries a tourniquet on him so that he has a chance of saving the people that he that he has if, if that chance ever yes. comes or if that sad mo moment ever so comes. That, that detail in circumstances to... shows mm -hmm. you that wow. gives you a mm -hmm. ground by which to say he didn't intend. Yeah. Right. So sometimes mm -hmm. we have to know the circumstances and the person and what they thought in their history and what they were going to do and what they said to people to mm -hmm. determine, like in a law court, what mm -hmm. were they intending? And, and So with the trolley problem, mm -hmm. I can yeah. maybe intend to save the five lives yes. and in so doing the consequences to kill the one. Yes. But I could also uh, intend not to kill that one life by making this action and these five deaths result. Yeah, by not doing anything, and yeah. then the five people get. Run I think over. that's honestly probably what I would do if yeah. I found myself mm -hmm. in this weird situation with a, with a train going towards five people. I, I don't think I'd pull the lever. Yeah, and and a lot of people mm. because I would know that in so doing, I'm yes. committing. Did you notice the way that when you described mm. the setup, it said what is the right thing to do? Mm. And see, I think one of the things Anscombe points out is that in our modern way of thinking which she labeled and created the term consequentialism. Mm. There's always the right thing because the right thing is the thing that causes the optimistic balance of good and evil in the future. 
the consequences. That's what makes every action good or evil. It's, ob it's objective. It's yes, not subjective. It's objective. It's mm -hmm. if this action causes the best effects, right? Optimific, meaning minimizes the, the bad and maximizes the good and the right balance, the best balance, then that action is the right action and all the other ones are wrong. Well, in reality, that's not the way reality is. Reality, of an, sometimes there's not the right action. There's lots of things that you can do that are mm, permissible. Got you. Right? And so the way we should think about it as, as Catholics and as, as moral philosophers, right, who are classical and ancient and have that kind of, I think, better view, the virtue view, um, is that, you know, in any case, we say, is it obligatory? Right? Mm -hmm. It's not obligatory to pull the lever. Right? And so that means it's permissible. So what makes it permissible now, right, doesn't mean you necessarily do it or not, because there might be more than one permissible thing to do, mm -hmm. right? And so that's the categories we should be looking at. Gotcha. Is, first of all, that we're not obligated to do this, and we're obligated to not do this. That gets me to the A-bomb. We are obligated, right, to never intentionally kill innocent people, right? So that's, let's take a clear case. Dropping an A-bomb on innocent people is intentionally killing innocent people. There's no getting around that. You can't abuse double effect and say, well, I'd, Truman didn't mean to kill all those people. He just wanted them to surrender, right? Well, and then I could, I could ask, well, how did he want them to surrender? How was he going to get them to surrender? Was he going to drop a bomb? Well, how's dropping a bomb going to make somebody surrender? Well, it's going to land on this place, right? Notice how I'm messing with the descriptions. Mm. Well, how's landing on this place going to make them surrender? Well, this place has like, you know, buildings and stuff. Well, how's like blowing up buildings going to make... And to, you're going to have to specify that it's dropping a bomb on these people and destroying lots of people. That is how he's going to get them down to their knees to surrender. Right? So that's his means to the end. You can't pretend not to intend the means to your chosen end. Right? So that's a clear case. And so in traditional moral thinking, that's, you can never do that. It's just off the table. Right? Um, so, become, and, and here we get back to this consequentialism. Yes. What uh, what um, John Paul talked about in uh, proportionalism, veritas yeah. splendor. Yeah, veritas yeah. splendor. Yeah, this uh, this idea that because this is the argument that I've heard people make for why the A bomb was good. Yeah. Well, if you hadn't dropped the A bomb, yeah. then this would have resulted in think how More much worse that died. was. Yeah. But that's the very thing we're kind of forbidden to do. Yeah. and shouldn't do. Yeah, exactly. Whether yeah. we're forbidden or not. Exactly. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.